Okay, uh, it's one of those uh, April days where the sky, uh, sky one side of me is um, sunshine and the other side of me is real dark clouds. Um, I think it's going to be perfect. It's about um, 20 past 6 sunsets tonight around 8 o'clock um, and I know of an excellent field with a track running through it that uh, sort of heads more or less into the sunset um, just about five or six miles from here so we're going to go out and uh, park up and try and get a shot of these angry April skies the kind of skies that you really only get in April I've come with plenty of time it's only half past six so I've got you know about half an hour before golden hour starts um, what I've come to shoot is behind me there is this oilseed rape field and just up the road there there is a track that runs through the middle of it um, and if you look where the sun is setting that track goes pretty much towards that now we need to go across this field to the right place and hope that the light plays ball um, unfortunately the sun looks like it's about to go behind back of cloud and there doesn't look to be too many breaks in that cloud at the moment. I want the sun lower than it is at the moment anyway. But if we look in the direction where I'm going to be shooting, and I'm going to be shooting into the sun, you can see that at the moment it's, uh, it's not looking overly promising. But hey, this is the thing about landscape photography. Uh, it's all about waiting. Um, waiting for the light to be right. Waiting for the moment to be right. Um, if anybody was to say to me what is the key ingredient you need as a landscape photographer, I would say it's, uh, it's quite definitely patience. Uh, I'm at the track now and uh, first thing I'm going to do before setting up, actually it's a really nice view from the end of the track, it's lovely. If I just swing around, you know, it's a really nice view. Um, but what I want to do is just to have a walk along and just see if it gets any better further along. It's quite a nice curve in the track here and it sort of disappears. Oh, no. Why don't I show you instead of talking about it? The track kind of disappears, curves around a little bit and disappears. I think this is definitely a much better vantage point than, uh, than back at the start of the track. So I think I'm going to set up somewhere around here. Right, well The sun's completely gone now, but I'm going to get set up. I'm going to just been having a think about what lens to use, and uh, I've decided I'm going to use the uh, <coughs> 1240 lens, which is uh, 2480 equivalent. Um, I thought about using nine millimeter lens, so which is 18 millimeters equivalent to go a bit wider. But to be honest. To the edges of the shot I'm not going to shoot low down I'm going to shoot high up on the tripod to get this nice curve of the uh, of this track and to be honest um, the uh, the nine will be a little bit too wide it, 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 I won't bring the foreground in because I'm going to shoot quite high on the tripod I don't see that I'm going to accentuate the foreground an awful lot and uh, I think that it would I, I think it's pointless to go that wide because actually to the side to either side of me it's not actually that picturesque. Now I really want to concentrate on this beautiful oil seed rate, the, the gold of this oil seed rate, seed rate field, and uh, the sun setting in the distance. Um, I just hope that uh, in the next half an hour or so, that cloud actually uh, decides that it's going to part at some point. Otherwise, it's probably a wasted trip. Although I'm sure we'll get something. I'm sure there'll be something come out today, it just won't be particularly what I was hoping for. Okay, so I'm set up, ready to go. I've got a remote shutter release, because I'm shooting HDR, I'm on a tripod. I'm on my Benro Travel Angel tripod, and uh, I'm going to give another plug for this tripod, because it is fantastic. I love it, it's lightweight, it's perfect for micro four thirds, but do you know what, even if you don't shoot with a smaller camera like this, if you shoot full frame, for this kind of scenario is fine for 99 percent of the scenarios that you will be shooting landscapes in it is absolutely fantastic well worth it uh, there's a review on my website uh, and i absolutely love it
it's a fantastic tripod. Anyway, enough about that. Um, I've got the Olympus OMD EM1 set up here, and I've got it in HDR uh, bracketing. So I'm shooting three exposures, minus two, normal exposure, and plus two. Um, and I have to say, through the viewfinder here, through the live view on the screen, the sky looks amazing. What I'm looking for, in the foreground, as you can see, it's pretty dark. I'm hoping that we'll start to get some beautiful red light on the horizon. And uh, with a bit of luck, we'll get some streams of light fall across this oil seed rainfield. Right, so it's now seven o'clock. So we've, I've been here about a um, quarter of an hour, something like that. And just have a look at the, uh, the weather app on my phone, which says it's gonna rain shortly, which would be nice. And there we go, here's the sun. Uh, it's about quarter past seven. This is what we're looking for. The sun is starting to fall now, right on this obviously great field. The sun is out and I'm gonna rattle off a shot. I'm not quite so keen on the sky now, but I think the sun is going to drop down and come out from behind that cloud fairly soon. Um, I've put a neutral density, uh, graduated neutral density, hard edge, 0.6. Now, the way I decided on 0.6 is I've got a great little app on the iPhone. It's called Auto ND. And if we open that, it tells me, we have a look, it tells me to take, take a shot of the brightest point, take a shot of the darkest point, which is what I'm going to do. Uh, go there. Take a picture of the darkest spot, which is about somewhere down here. And it's actually telling me 0.3 now, which it told me 0.6 a second ago. Hey ho, I'm going to stick with 0.6 because the sun was out when I took it before. The sun was just out and it's not now, it's behind a cloud. So the drop brightest point now isn't what it will be when the sun comes out. So it's now... It's now 25 past 7. I've got about another 10 minutes till I've got to walk back to the car and go. So I'm going to wait until hopefully that sun comes down from behind that cloud. And I'm going to do, I'm still going to do HDR, but I have got a neutral density filter on. Good news is the rain has gone. If you look around me, we've got blue skies coming from where the weather is, so I know I'm not going to get any more rain. Blue skies quite a lot, quite a way around me actually, um, but thankfully not in front of me. The thing with landscape photography is just keep shooting. In situations like this the light is changing all the time and you really, it's almost impossible to tell until you get back and look at them on a screen, a decent sized screen. It's almost impossible to tell what was the good, the best light. This light is now lovely falling on the field. This is exactly, exactly what I came for. Okay. I think I'll try something, some F22, and then we'll call it a day. Okay, so uh, I'm now back in the warm and the dry, uh, and I've had a look through all the shots that I did earlier, and I've chosen these three bracketed shots that were done at about quarter past seven. And the first thing I'm going to do is, because I did it with HDR in mind, is I'm going to select all three and I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose Photo Merge HDR. Now I'm just going to use this purely for merging the three images. So I'm going to leave all these options off and I'm just going to say Merge. Now. That gives us our merged image, which we're now going to go into the develop module. And the sky here, for me, is just a little bit washed out still. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the highlights and I'm going to bring them down. And for this, I'm going to bring them right down. Like that. The next thing is I want to bring out... Uh, the field it's a little bit dark and the track so I'm going to bring up the shadows to about there okay the next thing I'm going to do I'm going to ignore all this for now but I may come back to it later the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here 
to the tone curve and I'm going to choose a medium contrast curve. So it's just given the image more contrast. Now, as far as basic uh, editing, I'm going to leave that exactly as is for now. And the next thing I'm going to do, I want to treat the sky and the land separately. So the sky and the field separately. And I'm going to do that with graduated filters. So the first thing I'll do is go, hit, go over and select my graduated filter and put a graduated filter on. And I'm just going to pull it down a bit like that. Now what I'm looking to do here, <coughs> excuse me, is bring out uh, some drama in the clouds. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to warm this up just a bit, just about that far. And then I'm going to bring the exposure down. So and I, I want these nice dark clouds. So I've got to warm but dark. In fact, let's go a bit. I have that will do. That will do, I think. Uh, next, I'm going to do is bring the contrast up on these clouds. Okay, so we've got a nice dark sky there. And I'm going to now do the clarity, which will just bring out a bit of detail in the sky. Okay, I may come back and play with that some more. Um, but for now, I'm going to leave that like that. So I think that's probably... It's probably going to end up being a little over the top. But we'll see what it's like when the... When the uh, when the when I've done the field, so I'm now going to select uh, the graduated filter tool again, and this time I'm going to go up from the ground, and I'll just choose about there. And so for this one, again I'm going to bring I'm going to warm it up a little, so it kind of matches the sky. I think we'll go a little bit up from that. Okay, that'll do. Uh, and then I'm going to just bring the exposure up just a little bit. I'll just have a look. Okay. No, I'm not going to leave it like that. Now I'm going to bring the whites up. Okay, and I think we'll just have a look at the clarity. Again, to give a little bit of detail, not too much on the clarity. I'm going to, I want it, I want the, the, the feel to be, you know, very warm. So I'm going to just have a look at uh, the saturation and look at bringing that up. Let's not go too mad. Leave it about there, and I think we'll just see if we can take did that really do much? I'm not sure it did. We'll leave that like that. Okay, so that's kind of starting point, and we'll if we have a look at what we had originally, that's our original, and that's where we are now. So you can see we've bought out a hell of a lot already. Okay, now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to crop it. And I've decided I want this quite wide. And I want to lose all this sky up the top here. Uh, because it's just not very interesting. So I think I'm going to have a look at 16, 10. But I also don't like this patch here where I should have moved forward with my tripod a little. So... I think what I'm going to do is go 16.9. That kind of gives me a point where I can remove this bit of dull grass here and I can go just above this cloud to there. Okay, so if we press F, we get to see the actual aspect ratio that we're going to have. Brilliant. Now, the next thing that I want to do is bring out the track 
I want to the, the the track has got a lot of texture in it so but we've already done a graduated filter on the bottom of on the bottom half of the image uh, so what we're gonna what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just brush in the track so I'm gonna make sure everything's reset here by clicking on the effect button I'm gonna show mask overlay and I'm just gonna quite roughly paint in the track okay and the same over here there's no need to be too accurate with this I think perhaps I'll just bring that brush size down a bit and just do it there okay I'm happy with that so I'm going to take off oops what am I doing there I'm going to take off this show selected mask overlay and let's try and bring some something out in this so first thing I'm going to do is bring up the contrast okay and we'll go quite mad on the contrast okay that will do there um, now introduced in I think it was the, I can't remember if it was this version or the last version of um, Lightroom was the dehaze tool which I use an awful lot it uh, I'm not sure exactly what it's doing but it, it's kind of adding it seems like a little bit of clarity it's doing exactly what it sounds like if you've got a foggy scene it will sort of bring the remove the fog if you like so um, I think it's doing clarity and it's doing um, contrast all in one but uh, I'm going to bring this up to about there so we can see already if we turn that off that already the track is a lot more dramatic okay now the next thing I want to do is bring the clarity up quite high in fact I'm gonna go mad and I'm gonna go all the way with the clarity and let's just have a little play with the saturation on this just to warm it up a bit I think we'll go about there with the saturation and I'm just going to just bring the I think we'll just bring the shadows up to about there okay so if we compare that with what we had oops so we just put out the texture in the track and made the track a bit more interesting. Okay, I'm going to live with that for now. So I've done a couple of graduated filters. We have a look at full screen. And if we have a look at what it was like before by pressing the backslash, there you, are, you can see that it's brought out <laughs> rather a lot. Now, I'm still not happy with it. So the first thing I think is is a bit dark. So we, we've, we've done a graduated filter at the top, we've done a graduated filter at the bottom, and we've made the track more dramatic. And now, with all that done, it's on the, on the dark side. So I'm going to just bring up the exposure to about there, I think. If we look at our histogram, that looks a little more sensible. Um, okay, so the next thing I'll have a look at is... Now, I think it would be good here to just have a little play and see about bringing out the whites a little bit on these flat on these flowers here, on the, on the rape sea field. So, because that will brighten, so that's just brightening it up and bring the whites out a bit. So I think we we'll just go to about there, about 35. And then just want to have a look at the blacks. Now the interesting thing is what we can do here is we can see whether we got when we got this right. So if we hold down Alt, we can see when the when the whites start to push through too much. So if we go there, we're way over. So let's just. So we got that about right, 32, 35, something like that. And if we do the same, hold down Alt, and, and then we can see the blacks coming through at the bottom there. So I'm just going to go to about there. Okay, so 
if we just have a look at where we were, yep, we're getting there. Okay, so now that's done, I think what I want to do next is I just want to warm up the sky, make the sky a little more red, uh, which will hopefully have an impact on the field as well. So I think to do this, I'm going to go into HSL here and I'm just going to change the hue. Well, I'm not going to boost the red. I think what I'm going to do is just drop the orange down and hopefully that will, if we just do that enough, that will make the sky just a little more red. I think that will do. So if we turn that off, we'll see the sky's just gone a bit more red. So's the track. Um, I'm not convinced that the track looks right actually so I think what we'll do is we'll just go back in to where we painted the track and we'll select the track and I think what we'll do is we'll just just pull that back a little bit do we need to go a bit further okay Happy with that. Uh, only a couple of more things to do, I believe. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll now just make sure we sharpen. Let's just remove that. Let's make sure we sharpen it. And I think we'll go, let's just select a point and have a look. And we'll just get that nice and sharp. Let's not go too mad. And then, because we don't want to sharpen the sky, what we do is we hold down Alt and we do Mask In. And it's the white areas that are being sharpened and the black areas aren't. So we'll go quite a long way with our masking. And the final thing is we just want to give ourselves a vignette. And there we go. So, we started off with, oh, whoopsie daisy, let's try that again, let's try that again, let's try doing the right, so we started off with this, and now we have this.